It's time for the The Douglas Douglas Coleman Coleman Show. Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators. The famous and not so famous. The controversial and the light and fluffy. We have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, Connor Floyd. Hey, Connor, how are you? How you doing, man? Thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for coming on. Nice to see you. Nice to have you here. Although Absolutely. Everybody else is only going to be hearing you, not seeing you, but <laughs> that's all right. So that's as we, correct, right? <laughs> well, well, now you're a pretty handsome guy. I got to admit, you know. So I think a lot of the audience would like to see you. Oh, I appreciate it, man. So, anyways, as we were just talking about before we got on, I didn't get a bio from you. All I got was the. Uh, the little blip for The Last Deal, which is the film you're promoting. And it just says Connor Floyd, The Young and the Restless. Now, <laughs> I've known that show. That show's been on at least 50 years, right? Yeah, right. we're actually coming up on the 50th anniversary. Okay, so it is the same show, the one on CBS? It sure is. Okay, because I didn't know a lot of these shows have been rebooted and they're on a netflix version or something like that so yeah. but this, yeah, this is the uh the og one with uh you know loved characters like you know victor newman jack abbott that whole deal i remember those characters absolutely yeah. so who do you play on that show my character's name is philip chance chancellor the fourth uh he's obviously part of that chancellor family which is uh one of the big families there in genoa city uh, he's kind of one of the last ones standing at this point. I know my grandmother, the, or the lady that plays my grandmother, is still on the show. Um, I started about a year and a half ago. They thought my character was dead. He's a cop. He works for the feds. He does all these kind of action hero type things and uh, went on a secret mission to Spain, and his entire team was killed. So it, his family was told that he was dead as well, but... He's alive and well and back in Genoa City now. <laughs> Is there anybody on that show that was from the original, like started in the 70s? Or, yeah, yeah, I think uh, Eric Braden is, was there from the beginning. And I know uh, Melody Thomas Scott uh, has been there for a really long time. And then Peter Bergman as well, the guy who plays Jack Abbott. I think they're, they're OG. I could be wrong. I know braden has been there for a long, long time, so... If anything, I know he's definitely OG cast. They would have been on that show for the last 50 years. I mean, that's a hell of a career. Isn't it? Yeah. And I get to go to work with these guys every day, which is amazing. And so I'm, I'm just trying to learn as much as I can from these people so I can I can work for 50 plus years, right? Now, how do they do that? Is it still they just do it a video, they tape it, and then put it on? It's not live, right? No, yeah, there's no live audience. Uh, we're working on a sound stage, so you know we got. You walk into the studio, and it looks like an IKEA in there with all these different rooms <laughs> set up, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know we got four cameras shooting, uh, a big old crew, a huge cast, and we're shooting about sixty pages a day, which is nuts. If uh, you know anyone knows about production uh, time and everything, but. Uh, it's a well-oiled machine, I'll tell you what. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't think they ever shot in front of a li- live audience. That would be pretty cool, though. I don't know. You'd have to go way back. I know that yeah. uh, Dark Shadows originally was shot in front of a live audience. That's cool. Yeah. That'd be fun. I, I know a lot of the actors joke around about, hey, we should do a live episode. But I, I feel like there'd be a lot of <laughs> a lot of moving parts involved with that. But that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. Well, a lot of the old sitcoms, I mean, from the 70s and even into the early 80s, were shot in front of a live audience. And Sure, yeah. I don't know if that's, you know, if they do that so much anymore because it's a lot more work. I mean, you need a lot bigger space. You need security. You need people to warm up the audience. You need, you need all kinds of people when you have live audience. But I don't know, but it made it interesting. I don't know. There used to be people on... Uh, Hollywood Boulevard and places they would hand out tickets to go see the shows. They were free. Yeah. Um, those were the days. I don't know if that's still around. I really don't. I mean, the thrill of uh, performing in front of a live audience, I bet that's a that's a killer. I, 
I did theater back in the day, but never done like a production out here or a, a sitcom with a live audience. So that'd be that'd be fun. Well, let me uh, let me ask you a little bit about you, your background. So you said you did theater. Did you always want to be an actor, or was this something you did to rebel against your parents, or what? <laughs> well, actually, I I played football growing up all the way through college, and that was kind of the goal for a long time. Uh, and I kind of saw the light at the end of the tunnel my co- or my senior year in college, and so I decided to flip over to, to acting. So it might be me rebelling against myself, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I developed this love for passion – or, I mean, this passion for acting. Uh, in college, I took a lot of classes my, my senior year because I graduated early and I had a whole le- – or a year of football left. Uh, really started to understand acting a little bit more and study it and – you know, go into depth with it because back in the day it was just kind of more for fun. You know, I'd take a theater arts class, get a small part, and try to make everybody crack up in the audience, right? Uh, but yeah, it was something that I always really enjoyed, but I never really thought about as a profession. So once I graduated, I went home, kind of reflected on things for a while, packed up my Jeep, and drove out west. And here we are, eight years later. So you're in LA now? I sure am. Okay, and you came from where? I came from Austin, Texas. Texas, okay. So did you get a degree in something at the university? Yeah, I, I got my degree in business marketing. I tried to do theater, <laughs> but uh, the football and the theater time commitment didn't really play opposite of each other, so uh, I had to make a choice. And I was getting paid to play football, so I had to go there. <laughs> well, at least you've got something in case the uh, the acting doesn't pan out. But it seems like it's doing pretty well for you already. Yeah, oh man, my football days are done. Don't worry about that. <laughs> that's that's long and beyond me. That I wish I used that business marketing degree too, and I, I hardly do it. So uh, yeah, we're we're gonna try to make this acting thing work. So aside from the young and the restless, and now you've got a film out called The Last Deal. What else have you done up to this point? I've done a handful of Lifetime movies, a lot of movies of the week um, the past few years. One's actually coming out in March. You can catch it on Lifetime. It's called She Inherited Danger. Um, besides that, we've been rocking Y&R for the last year and a half. And the last deal is something that we shot, uh, shoot, three years ago, I think in 2020. And um, so it's just now coming to the light, which has been a really fun process because Jonathan Salimi, the uh, the director, he's been working his tail off and really made something that's, that's fun and entertaining and really cool. You shot this right at the beginning of the COVID pandemic? It was like, I, I, it's, we've been trying to figure this out. I think it was like August 2020. Well, that would so, have been just getting into it. Yeah. yeah, we were just getting into it. So I remember it was really weird. Because everyone was still very, you know, cautious. Uh, I had been locked in my apartment for, you know, who knows how long. So I was itching for work. Um, so it was, it was great to get on set. And Jonathan, man, he's, he is a captain. So he, he brought the fun. He made sure everybody was comfortable and safe, and, you know, abided by the rules and everything. And uh, yeah, we had a, we had a good time that one day that I was on set. So who's your character in this one? Last deal. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a small piece of the pie. My name is my character's name is Marcus. Uh, he's kind of this, you know, <laughs> character that uh, Anthony's character, the main the main character of the film, meets at the beginning, uh, and it kind of just uh, my character is supposed to kind of contrast towards him because he's kind of on his last leg right now. He's struggling for work. Um, he's trying to you know figure something out to to shake things up and. He comes across my character, who's a lot, or who's like younger than him and doing a little better than him, and so he gets a little jealous, and this guy kind of rubs it in his face. So it's a, it's a funny scene. Uh, like I said, it's a small piece of the pie, but um, it, it's a it's a funny way to start out the movie. So basically, the movie is about marijuana dealers who they're doing their last big deal before it goes legal. Well, I think it's legal already. So it's this okay. guy that was working independently, trying to, you know, cough up some cash one last time before he calls it quits. And I assume he gets into some kind of trouble. Yeah, he gets into a sticky situation. You know, he starts uh, working with these people he probably shouldn't be working with. And he gets screwed over a couple of times by some other folks. So, you know, he uh, he, he finds himself in a hole. <laughs> okay. Uh, is the movie out? 
Yeah, it's out in theaters. It's select theaters. Uh, if you go to, to the lastdealmovie.com, it has all the cities and the theaters that it's in. Um, I don't know. Where, where are you at right now? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. I don't know about Nevada. You'll have to get on there and check. But uh, I know it is playing in Dallas. My parents went and saw it the other day. Well, I've got yeah. the screener. I apologize. I did not get a chance to see the movie because Monday morning is not a great time for me to watch a film. You know, so I will watch it this evening uh, and, no and check no it out. Man, no worries. The, the, yeah, uh, it's a little it's a little hardcore for a Monday morning watch. Well, you know, you got to get through the the day was the day's work first, and then you can. Uh, I don't consider watching a movie part of my job, although it should be, because this yeah. is what I do. But I don't know, getting up in the morning and having my first cup of coffee and watching a movie just doesn't quite. <laughs> Something weird about yeah. that, you know? Yeah, I hear you. It's, a, it's, a, it's probably a night flick, so throw it on later tonight and you'll have a good time. Yeah, I think so. All right, Connor. Well, anything else? Um, you got anything you're working on now? Uh, just why not right now. Uh, like I said, the 50th anniversary is coming up in March, so everyone stay tuned for that. That's going to be some pretty juicy uh, some juicy storylines for all you Y&R geeks. Okay. Is that a daily show? Yeah, Monday through Friday, man. Wow. Monday through Friday. So yeah. what's your schedule like for years. that? Uh, it kind of depends. Uh, you know, we, we shoot Tuesday through Friday. So depending on storyline, you know, if you're real hot in the storyline, you could be working four days a week, you know, for whoever knows how long. Uh, so it, it's kind of been back and forth. You could have a lot of time off as well. It just, you know, depends. I've had times where it's, you know, back to back to back for a couple months. Uh, and then you get like a few weeks off, which is nice. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Like you go on a, a yeah. holiday or something in the storyline and so they don't need you. And Yeah. You or, you know, they're off. playing some other story. I mean, we got a cast of like 25 plus people or something like that. So there's, there's a lot of people I haven't even worked with. So, you know, when their storylines are hot, those, that kind of group of the cast is working. The other groups kind of take some time off, but when you're working, it's a load, man. It's a uh, it's a heavy load. You gotta you gotta be on your stuff. Are you there all day? I mean, ten, twelve hours at least. Yeah, you know, it depends too. You know, if uh, whatever, uh, however many amount of scenes you got, you could you know pop in for like an hour, and that could be your day. So it's uh, it's it's an awesome job, and uh, sometimes it's brutal. Sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's kind of nice. Are they still shooting that at uh, CBS Television City? Yes, sir. And television City. Okay. Well, that hasn't changed. All right. Yeah, live. <laughs> All right, Connor. Well, listen, it was nice meeting you. Uh, best of luck with the film. Do you have a website, like a personal one or a Twitter or no, Instagram? No, I got, a, I got an out? Instagram. That's kind of the only thing I'm active on, but it's uh, Connor G. Floyd, and that's C-O-N-N-E-R-G-F-L-O-Y-D, like the band. Okay. And that's Instagram, you said, yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Well, best of luck with the film. Nice meeting you, and uh, I'm going to watch it tonight. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy it, man. It'll be a good time, and uh, I appreciate you having me on. It was nice meeting you as well. You're listening to Mr. Smooth and Savvy right here on The Douglas Coleman Show. We'll be right back after these commercial messages. Douglas Coleman's Don't Do a Podcast is a dryly humorous rant about Douglas's pet peeve, the unrelenting torrent of podcasts hitting the web on a constant basis. As technology has put podcasting within the reach of anyone, many wholly unqualified people have taken the plunge. This witty polemic tries to persuade them from broadcasting their drivel using Douglas's brand of sarcastic humor. Now on Amazon, only 99 cents. DJC Music and DJC Productions are pleased to announce a brand new website. We have started a listing website for radio show hosts as well as potential show guests. This is a meeting site where hosts and guests can come together. Show hosts can list their show and types of guests they're interested in booking. Potential guests can list their talents, bio, accomplishments or anything they feel makes them an interesting radio show guest. There are no recurrent payments, only a one-time $5 listing fee. Your listing will stay up until you decide to cancel. Previous guests of The Douglas Coleman Show are welcome to submit their guest listing free of charge. Go to RadioHostsAndGuests.com. That's 
radiohostsandguests.com. Are you an independent musician? How would you like to have your songs played on hundreds of radio stations just like the one you're listening to right now? Join MusicSubmit.com and we'll promote your music to radio stations and blogs in your genre. It's free to set up your account and we guarantee your music will be considered for airplay by radio stations worldwide. Why not sign up today? It's free. MusicSubmit.com. Radio promotion for indie musicians. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. Don't touch anything. You've got it right where you need it. Tuned in to the Douglas Coleman Show. You heard me. Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, Marva Morris. Hi, Marva. How are you? Wonderful, Douglas. How are you today? Oh, doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Nice to have you here. So, let's see. Thanks for having me. Bye. You are the founder and CEO of Zen Edge Energy Drinks? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about energy drinks because I don't know that much about them. I know there's uh-huh. a ton of them on the market. And, oh, yes. Uh, the one that comes to mind is Red Bull. I mean, that's probably the, uh-huh. more, the most famous one, would you think? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes, it is. The well, number one. All right. Are, are these mm-hmm. different than the uh, protein shakes that a lot of the guys at the gym drink? Yes, uh, well, Zen Edge is classified um, in the functional beverage category, which is what energy drinks are. They're functional beverages. And Zen Edge uh, recently uh, relaunched its, its product to become classified under a Better For You brand. And what constitutes that is that we have less caffeine uh, than the than the major top brands as far as energy drinks. We also have uh, a lot of uh, healthy additives. We have uh, vitamin B, uh, which you see in most energy drinks anyhow. But our product is basically stimulated from the vitamins, uh, you know, the amino acids, the natural sugar we don't use any um in our in our flavors we don't use any artificial flavors at all but the best thing about it is that energy drinks usually taste pretty bad and what we've been able to do is to work with a uh company and and get our beverage taste right up there in the top uh, percentile of what customers, consumers are saying it, energy drinks taste like. So we, we feel that our product is a premium product because of the taste, the low caffeine, uh, the natural sugars that we offer in our flavors, and uh, because our consumers say you don't get a, a crash or jitters. That's what our consumers tell us. Uh, what flavors does your drink come in? Well, we have actually went into the lab and created uh, lemon ginger, a cola type brand or product, cherry, mango, regular and light. On the marketplace, we're currently rolling them out uh, a few at a time, which we just relaunched this brand about a year ago. So right now on the marketplace, we're offering light and we're offering mango. Oh, okay. Well, sounds good. So Mm -hmm. again, I said that I don't have much familiarity with energy drinks. Would it taste Mm -hmm. similar to what that I might know? You said it's not like those protein shakes. So is it more like Gatorade? Or no, a Gatorade is uh, is is more like a, a thirst uh, quencher, um, it, and it gives you electrolytes and that sort of thing. And that's why a lot of athletes drink Gatorade. That is also a functional beverage. But um, people who drink energy drinks 
say that this is what consumers just told me recently. Uh, they like the taste of Zen Edge. It, they feel like it actually tastes better uh, than Red Bull, but has a similar taste profile, they're saying, to Red Bull for the regular product and the light product. Uh, but as far as our mango, that is really one of our top sellers because it's it comes from the natural fruit. We don't use any artificial flavors in, in our flavored product. So it's actually mango juice that, you know, is squeezed into, um, you know, our formula. And, of course, they, they make it on a, in a batch and add it to our to our formula. I don't even know what Red Bull mm-hmm. tastes like. I, I was thinking it tastes like very bitter black coffee or something. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it has sort of a light, uh, citrusy, airy um, taste. It is carbonated. It's lightly carbonated. Some people don't like carbonated drinks, so it's a lightly carbonated drink. Okay. Um and it has it's it's very refreshing. Um it coffee I don't consider coffee a refreshing tasting beverage, although I love coffee as well. But I don't think it's uh like coffee. You don't really taste the caffeine, especially in our product, because uh we have a lot less caffeine um in our in our brand than, say, uh, Red Bull or Monster Green or any of the original products that that came out. There are a lot of people who are addressing no caffeine, but you have people like myself. I like like caffeine. I just can't tolerate high, high content of it. So it fits well for someone like myself who wants to have the stimulant but don't want to be overdosed with the stimulant of too much caffeine. Oh, well, I agree with you on caffeine. I love my caffeine, but I don't drink coffee. I drink mm-hmm. tea. And okay. mm-hmm. I drink, you know, black tea, and I will put the bag. Sometimes I make real tea, you know, like loose and with a teapot and the mm-hmm. whole thing, but sometimes it's too much work, <laughs> and I'll just yes, use tea I bags. Can. But uh, mm-hmm. I'll leave the tea bag in the cup for you know ten minutes at least, and so the oh yeah <laughs> it, it just turns it looks like black coffee, and you know mix a little <laughs> milk and uh, yeah and it's great and definitely is a kick. But um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so how big is your market? I mean, are you at uh, or I should say, where is your drink available? Is it available at Seven Eleven and Walmart, and or are you an online? Well, or? well, we're 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 available nationwide through Amazon, and in some countries, uh, Canada and Mexico. So we're available even overseas if you want if if you come on to the U.S. site to to buy. So Amazon gives us a wide exposure. We're also on Walmart.com. And we recently got approved uh, to go into Walmart into nine states. So we'll be debuting in Walmart uh, in-store in um, the spring of 2023. Currently, we're selling locally um, to stores. We are right now, for example, in a well-known regional convenience store called Country Fair. And Country Fair is um, 82 stores strong. And um, that was after we created our new brand and taste profile. That was the first um, opportunity that we got. And since then, we have started expanding in other networks within like the, a 90-mile radius of Erie, Pennsylvania, which is where I'm currently located. So it's primarily online, but you do have some... In-store. Some in-store. Okay. All right, great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, What made you decide to uh, start this business? Well, you know what? Um, I was very 
interested in trying to find something that would give me energy without making me sick. So <laughs> That's be a good quite idea. Open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be quite open, I was um, going through a healthy lifestyle reboot, and I needed some things. Um, you know, I was a tad overweight. I'd say 20 pounds. <laughs> 20 pounds overweight, I was very living a very stressful life, you know, had just gone through a divorce and I had four children I needed to educate and they're all educated now and college graduates and doing extremely well, thank God. But I needed energy because I was running back and forth. My daughters were collegiate athletes and I, they're the baby girls and they're twins. And they went to Marshall University and I used to have to drive down to West Virginia and those mountains and bad weather or good weather, whatever it was, mountains are no fun to drive in. And pick them up on campus, uh, take them back, help them with, you know, moving into a new apartment, whatever changes they were going in their life, going to their track meets, uh, because they ran D1. And I was exhausted. I had just closed down uh, one business and had a little bit of money uh, left over from that. And I heard about an opportunity to that, you know, to buy this company. So initially, uh, I met my investment partner who since passed away. Um, his name was Tim McQuaid. And he died from uh, COVID in oh. 2020. Wow. Yeah. So Tim and I um, bought the company together around 2009. We kind of incubated the brand for a few years. And then something came up where we, the other partners that we bought the company from, they exited the business. And then about five years later, I became... I started running the company and I, you know, I'm the CEO and um, we put the brand under my corporation's name and just reorganized the company. And when we did that, I started to take a look at the, the brand. And one of the claims to fame is that we had less caffeine, but that was it. I looked at the formula and I thought, I don't want to be organic, but I want to be more natural, simple ingredients, you know, continue with our claim about the low caffeine. But the main thing I wanted um, on top of all of that was to have a great taste profile. So um, luckily we were able to continue to work with what the original um, members of the company were doing and we started working uh, again with the same flavor companies, the same co-packing. And so we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. All we really had to do was just launch. And um, I was able to find funding after my partner passed away with a local bank. And then that kind of snowballed and jump started the opportunity for me to grow. And others followed and received grants and other, you know, funding. And so now uh, here we are and about to go into our, to a big box company. So we're excited about that. Oh, that's great. So do you have a one major uh, manufacturing plant or do you have more than one? Right now, just one. Um, it's in the Northeast. We feel that it's close to a lot of main arteries, like, you know, uh, interstate arteries. And so we probably will stay there, um, you know, for a lot of proprietary reasons as well. You know, we want to make sure that as we're growing, our brand stays secure. And uh, we do have seven trademarks, and we're, we're working on, on continuing to expand the brand as well you know, the profile. So got a good re working relationship with our co-packer, and that's why we we want to stay there for now. But we 
We will expand as we as we continue to grow. Okay. Does this come in bottles or cans? 12-ounce cans, aluminum. It's made very sustainably. Uh, the company just recently upgraded their equipment, and they, they have a, a water savings system in terms of their process and manufacturing. They're able to, you know, save on electricity and that sort of thing. So I'm very excited about the factories. Uh, sustainable uh, processes that they're using for environmental purposes as well. So how much do you produce in one day? I'm just curious how, how well, big your operation is. Well, there are 27,000 units at where I co-pack. I'm, they do, they're capable of doing up to 27,000 units per hour. Um, oh, that's When I buy hour. from them, I buy truckload quantities. Uh, okay. Right. So I have a warehouse that I use that um like is one of the large regional warehouses and they actually not only can house our inventory but they can ship our inventory anywhere in the world. Oh, okay. So that that's quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's quite a lot. Yes. Yeah, it's a logistics company and they are they're like having an 800-pound gorilla in the room when it, when it comes to <laughs> logistics. I love that. <laughs> oh, that's great. So yeah. I, I guess that would keep you pretty busy. You had mentioned at the beginning that before we got on that uh, you have a book in the works. Do you want to give us a little teaser yeah, on that? Absolutely. Our trademark slogan for uh, Zen Edge for beverage and energy drinks is it's what's inside that counts. And so therefore, I've been thinking, or I was thinking, that would be a good um, name. So we announced the name. Um, it's going to be available on Amazon this summer. And so the name of the book is It's What's Inside That Counts. When do you think that'll come out? Probably around the 1st of June is when I'm expecting it. I didn't want to get too busy um, with the launch, especially since we're going into Walmart this spring, and I wanted to make sure I had time available to do the book launch. So I'm almost done with everything I need to do now um, for our online project. I mean, not online, but our Walmart project. And so now that would give me a little more time to focus on on the book. Uh, so we're thinking around the beginning of June. Well, Marva, I think we're going to wind this down. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, Last question. Do you have a website that you want to give out? Oh, absolutely. www.zenedgeusa.com. Okay. And can people order the drinks from there? Yes, they can. Super. Well, thanks so much. There's a link there. Thanks so much Uh for coming on. This was was interesting. (laughs) Thank you.